Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Diane Nguyen is one of the most prominent and important characters in BoJack Horseman, and she's also one of the most nuanced and complex. She's a character that, like many of the characters in BoJack, endured many childhood traumas that would affect the way she approached life, the world, and her relationships. Diane's life was incredibly intertwined with BoJack Horseman's, for better and for worse, and over the course of the series, the pair of them go through countless highs and lows. It's not an accident that the final episode of the show ends with a 10-minute conversation between Diane and BoJack. So join me as we explore the complete timeline of Diane Nguyen. And also remember folks, if you like these BoJack timelines, I've actually made four of them already, so go check those out, especially the Herb Kazaz timeline, because uh, that one deserves a little more love. Thanks. But before we get started, let's talk about today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build your online presence, run your business, or make a personal website. It's seriously so user-friendly, I threw this cool page together pretty quickly, it was easy to use, and there are so many different customization options. My website looks professional, and it matches the aesthetic of my brand and YouTube channel, highlighting some of my favorite video essays I've worked on, as well as some of the recent productions I've worked on professionally, complete with links to my work and contact info. I seriously can't can't express how easy Squarespace is to use. Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to push the website public, use my link squarespace.com slash johnny2cellos to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Diane Nguyen was born on March 19, 1980, and grew up in Boston, Massachusetts. She actually wasn't given a name by her parents until she was four years old, eventually being named after Diane Chambers from the TV show Cheers. Hi, Kinko. I'm Diane. It means my parents liked the show Cheers. Diane's childhood was not easy. She had four brothers, all of whom were quite mean to her for her entire life. In 1996, when Diane was 16 years old, her brothers began writing her letters as a secret pen pal named Leo, who invited Diane to homecoming. They then hired a hobo to play Leo and filmed Diane's devastated reaction to this revelation. They called the video the cry Anne video. Diane's father would often prioritize her brother's confidence and happiness over her own. Diane claimed that her father was mean and sadistic and delighted in her failure. Her mother treated her poorly in other ways, including guilt tripping her for leaving Boston to start her own life. Queen Didi blesses us with her presence. So what do I owe the honor? Diane didn't have a good experience at school either. In high school, Diane was stuffed in a locker by cheerleaders who wrote the word virgin slut on her forehead, a rude oxymoron, and she was often bullied by a classmate named Chrissy Keating. She did have a friend named Abby, but that friend proceeded to abandon Diane when she was adopted by a cooler crowd and then joined in on making fun of Diane, even using her knowledge of her life against her. Despite this, Diane provided Abby with emotional support when Abby's mother got sick. Because of her difficulties at home and at school, Diane found comfort in the series Horsin' Around and watched it weekly, wishing that her family could be as loving and supportive as they were. Sometime around 1998, Diane began attending Boston University, where she majored in literature and equine studies. During this time, Diane had her first experience with depression and began taking Prozac, but she stopped taking it when she struggled with the side effects, such as acne breakouts, weight gain, and Dawson's Creek becoming bad. After college, Diane moved to Los Angeles, California, and by 2007, she was working as a barista at a Starbucks with her friend Roxy and boyfriend Wayne. She also moonlit as a caterer with these friends while applying as a writer for various publications. During this time, she learned a piece she wrote was rejected by the New Yorker. While working at Starbucks, Diane met TV actor Mr. Peanut Butter, who was with his then-wife Jessica Biel. Shortly after this, Diane also saw Mr. Peanut Butter in an event that she was catering. During this event, Jessica Biel broke up with Mr. Peanut Butter, and shortly after this, Mr. Peanut Butter and Diane began dating. Add me on MySpace, okay? Sure. All right. Guess I'll see you around. In 2009, Diane went with Mr. Peanut Butter to BoJack Horseman's annual Halloween party. Diane, being a big fan of BoJack through Horse and Around, attempted to introduce herself to him. This went poorly and embarrassed Diane, though she was unaware that he had just learned of his own father's death. I'm on the phone right now. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, Mom, I'm still here. Between 2009 and 2014, Diane spent three years researching and writing Secretariat, A Life, a biography on the racehorse Secretariat. She also authored The Rise and Fall of Strongheart and Tracing Zippo Pine Bear. In 2014, Diane attends another party at Bojack Horseman's house, this time as a candidate to ghostwrite his memoirs. The two hit it off and Bojack decides to work with her on his book, before learning that she is dating Mr. Peanut Butter. 
Oh my god. Work on Bojack's memoir was rocky, and it took a bit for Bojack to open up to Diane. After a drawn out conflict with Neil McBeal, the Navy SEAL, Bojack finally starts to reveal real details about his past to Diane. While Diane and Bojack are meeting with their publisher Pinky at Penguin Books, Diane gets a call and learns that her father has died, though she is seemingly not upset by it. The pair of them then make a pit stop in Boston before leaving the East Coast. While in Boston, Diane learns that her family has done literally nothing to deal with the death of her father, leaving all of the work up to her. Meanwhile, Bojack bonds with all of her brothers. After making all of the arrangements for her father's funeral, none of her family shows up to the service, including her father's corpse. It turns out that the family had gotten Mr. Nguyen chummed, hoping to throw it in Derek Jeter's face. And instead of going to the service, they drank at a bar while watching sports. This sends Diane into an absolute furious rage Rage, and she drives off in frustration. Bojack locates Diane and gives her a letter written as Leo, her secret pen pal. He tells her she's too good for her family and she shouldn't waste her energy impressing them. The two share a nice moment together and go back to Los Angeles. When they arrive back in LA, Mr. Peanut Butter expresses concern that Diane and Bojack are becoming closer. Though Bojack denies it, the pair of them begin to compete in what becomes an incredibly dumb pissing contest, during which Diane falls asleep. Bojack ends up taking it even further, stealing the D from the Hollywood sign for Diane. Mr. Peanut Butter tells Bojack he'll help him return the D, but instead actually takes credit for stealing the D as a grand gesture for Diane. That night, Bojack leaves a voicemail for Diane confessing his feelings for her. While he was leaving the voicemail, Mr. Peanut Butter proposes to Diane and she accepts. She said yes! Let's kick it! Erica, did you hear she said yes? Come on in here! Shortly after, Diane joins Bojack on his trip to Malibu to see Herb Kazaz and enjoys a mostly nice afternoon with them before Bojack and Herb get into a actual physical fight. On the way back from Malibu, Bojack stops the car and gets out on the Pacific Coast Highway in an attempt to collect himself. While Diane gets out to see if he's okay, Bojack kisses her. Deeply uncomfortable, Diane retreats back to the car. After this awkward encounter, Diane tells Bojack that she has enough to write the book and begins avoiding him. Listen, I was looking over my notes, and I think I have enough to go write the book. Now spending more time with Mr. Peanut Butter, the pair decide to move their wedding to take place within a month. Unbeknownst to Diane, during this time, Bojack is attempting to sabotage the wedding and even goes so far as to hire character actress Margot Martindale to stage a bank robbery and steal Diane's wedding ring. But this goes very wrong, leading to Diane and PB moving their wedding up to the following week. We could get married Saturday, am I crazy? Yes, don't do it. On June 13th, 2014, Diane Nguyen and Mr. Peanut Butter get married. A couple of months later, Diane finishes her book about Bojack titled One Trick Pony, and unfortunately, Bojack hates it and tells her to fix it. Instead, she leaks the first few chapters, which leads to a very positive reaction from readers. Despite this, Bojack fires Diane. Maybe you're right. Really? No. You're fired. One week later, after attempting to write the book himself, Bojack attends Diane's panel of ghostwriters and apologizes publicly. He tells her they can publish the book and asks her one question. I, I guess my question is, do you... Do you think it's too late for me? Diane stares back at Bojack in silence, no response. In 2015, One Trick Pony has become a massive success and helped catapult Bojack back into the spotlight. It even wins a Golden Globe for Best Comedy or Musical Film. Diane is contacted by philanthropist Sebastian St. Clair, who asks her to write his memoir as he does humanitarian work in war-torn Cordovia. She is also offered a job to be a character consultant on the film production Secretariat, given her experience writing Secretariat's biography. Ironically, the role of Secretariat actually goes to Bojack, partially due to the success of One Trick Pony. Diane is torn between the two job opportunities, but Mr. Peanut Butter convinces her to stay home and work on Secretariat. You know I support you, whatever you want to do, but you're not going to find what you're looking for in these awful, made-up places. Diane ends up running into Bojack at Mr. Peanut Butter's launch party for his new PB Live adventure, Smooties. The two of them retreat to the roof where Bojack first opened up to Diane, and they have another heart-to-heart. -heart. Diane apologizes for leaving Bojack hanging at the Ghost Rider panel and opens up about her own beliefs. I don't think I believe in Deep Down. I kind of think all you are is just the things that you do. Well, that's depressing. The two commiserate over the fact that they will soon be co-workers on Secretariat. One month later, production begins on Secretariat. Diane and Bojack actually decide to carpool together. Unfortunately for Diane, she isn't given much room to character consult on set, instead being told to babysit a large cable so people don't trip. Diane is still being courted by Sebastian St. Clair, and she tells him that she plans to come write his memoir after filming on Secretariat is finished. On March 19th, 2015, Diane celebrates her 35th birthday with a great day out with Mr. Peanut Butter. She considers it a perfect birthday until she learns that PB planned a surprise party for her that night 
During the party, Diane gets in a huge fight with PB about whether Tony Curtis is dead or not, ending the festivities early. The two of them have a big conversation about their relationship and how Mr. Peanut Butter doesn't seem to listen to what she needs or wants. She doesn't like parties or big gestures, and his surprise for her was both. While discussing their relationship, Diane realizes that Mr. Peanut Butter really doesn't want her to go to Cordovia, but she expresses how important it is for her to feel like she's helping people and making a difference. She also expresses fears over falling into a routine as a couple. I wake up in the morning, and I feel like I have no purpose. And... I'm 35, and if I don't make some change in my life, then this is how I'm going to feel forever. Not long after the surprise party, Diane helps Todd try to hide a chicken who was engineered to become food from the authorities. Meat is kind of complicated in the BoJack universe. They later try to break her out of further captivity. Though they break the law, BoJack actually gets them out simply by being famous. After Mr. Peanut Butter's company, PB Living, goes bankrupt, Diane becomes incredibly concerned that they're going to lose their house, and resorts to penny pinching and even stealing from work. PB, of course, finds a job in the luckiest, most happenstance way possible, and these fears are put to rest. Soon, Diane goes on tour with BoJack to promote the release of the paperback edition of One Trick Pony. During the Q&A with journalists, Diane answers a question about BoJack's reputation taking a hit following the release of the book. Were you worried at all that it would hurt BoJack or his Career? That's a great question. Diane ends up citing a series of celebrities who have done much worse than Bojack, including Hank Hippopopoulos. This accusation makes Diane public enemy number one in the media, and people begin attacking her for her comments on Hank. It completely overshadows the book tour and even leads to Mr. Peanut Butter begging Diane not to take it any further, as his new job and TV series shares a network with Hank's show. Despite this, Diane ends up on various news programs debating the Hank Hippopopoulos situation, and even goes to Manatee Fair to try and blow the story up once more. This leads to a dramatic discussion with Hank himself in a parking garage in which he intimidates Diane into backing down. Look, you had your fun, so why don't you call it a day and go home to your husband? Diane and Bojack end up having a major conversation about their friendship and working relationship after this. Diane ends up apologizing to Bojack for hurting his feelings through the book they wrote. Later that night, Mr. Peanut Butter confronts Diane about the Hank situation and asks why she made things worse, which actually leads to him telling Diane that she should go to Cordovia with Sebastian St. Clair, reversing how he felt about it previously. Shortly after this, Diane leaves LA for Cordovia. In Cordovia, Diane follows around Sebastian and attempts to write about him, but is incredibly disappointed to discover that he doesn't seem to care about the people he's helping. He only cares about his image being bolstered so that more people will donate to his organization. After this, Diane returns to LA. But instead of returning home, Diane crashes at Bojack's house without telling Mr. Peanut Butter that she's back. Diane goes down a bit of a depressive spiral while staying with Bojack, and her presence puts a huge strain on Bojack's relationship with his girlfriend Wanda. Wanda and Bojack end up breaking up after this. Diane opens up about her fears about going home to Mr. Peanut Butter and the nature of happiness. She later calls Mr. Peanut Butter and says she can't talk with him on the phone anymore. She spends the next two months continuing to crash at Bojack's house without contacting Mr. Peanut Butter. After these two months, Princess Carolyn calls Diane and offers her a job at her new agency, ghostwriting celebrity tweets, which she accepts. While meeting with one of her new clients, Sixtina Aquafina, she and Mr. Peanut Butter spot each other from across the restaurant. PB calls Diane and she agrees to come home. Though they have made up, Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter start couples counseling to help their relationship, while Diane continues to work for Vim running their socials. Not long after this, Bojack ropes Diane into a mystery adventure, searching for his old showrunner Cuddly Whiskers from when he was on the Bojack Horseman show, which leads to them discovering a dead body of a dancer from Whale World in his pool. This mystery leads them across LA, eventually discovering that there's a brand of heroin called Bojack, and then up to Ojai where they find Cuddly Whiskers. During this adventure, Mr. Peanut Butter angrily chastises Diane for not coming home and getting caught up in another Bojack adventure. You have to call me. It doesn't matter what's happening. It doesn't matter if it's the middle of the night. You can't keep doing this to me. Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter attempt to deal with this at couples therapy, and their therapist tells Diane that she should try to work on putting her feelings into words, which is difficult for her because she wasn't given the space or support to express herself as a child. Diane is contacted by a hugely popular actor, Alexi Brosofino, who leads an entourage known as the Snatch Batch. Alexi actually texts Diane to come over and hang out, which was a huge surprise to her. She goes over and meets the crew, Carlos, David, and Shit Show, and they all do a new drug together called Gush. While tripping balls with Alexi, Diane learns that Alexi never actually meant to text her to hang out, and that he meant to text a different Diane, but he just went with it after she showed up. Diane goes through a bit of a freakout, which then transitions into an existential revelation, and she rushes home to see Mr. Peanut Butter. The revelation and the drugs help her express herself to Mr. Peanut Butter, who she attempts to physically pick up, which leads to her breaking her wrist. While at the hospital for the broken wrist, Diane learns that she is pregnant. Mother 
Not long after this, Diane's stress about her job, pregnancy, and planned abortion lead to her accidentally tweeting, I'm getting an abortion on Sextina Aquafina's Twitter account. Though she expects to get fired, this blunder actually leads to positive press for Sextina, and Diane helps her lean into the abortion angle. Sextina releases a song about abortion called Get Dat Fetus, Kill Dat Fetus, though Diane is very concerned over this approach. Sextina and Princess Carolyn then hatch a plan to broadcast her fake abortion live on pay-per-view despite Diane's protests. While in the waiting room for her own abortion, Diane talks to a young woman at the clinic who expresses that Sextina's music made her feel empowered to make the right decision for herself, which helps Diane see the value in what Sextina is doing. Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter end up going to the Labrador Peninsula for New Year's 2016, where they spend time with Mr. Peanut Butter's brother, Captain Peanut Butter. Captain Peanut Butter continually says existential things to Diane when they're alone, which pushes Diane to tell Mr. Peanut Butter to press his brother about what's wrong. This leads to a big fight between the two of them. Just because you have a shitty relationship with your family doesn't mean every other family has to have drama too. In early 2016, Bojack is nominated for an Oscar for Secretariat and throws a huge party. Knowing Bojack well, Diane comes to the party to see if he's handling it okay. Bojack takes exception to this and insults Diane, telling her she fetishizes her own sadness. Diane angrily responds in turn with an equally painful insult about what will happen after he wins his Oscar. You're gonna be so miserable you want to kill yourself and you're gonna have nobody left to stop you. Later that day, Diane is unfortunately fired from Vim, which is failing as an agency. Diane then goes to grab food with her friend Roxy and rants about how self-centered people can be. This is what's wrong with society. Diane, nobody thinks about the world outside themselves. Ironically, in this moment, she is being incredibly self-centered and ignoring her friend Roxy. Sometime between mid-January and late February 2016, Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter arrive home to find Bojack and Sarah Lynn drunk and high, wearing their clothes. They had also eaten everything in the house. As they run out of the house, they shove Diane over and she breaks her wrist again, which had just healed. After Sarah Lynn's tragic death, Diane goes to Bojack's to comfort him. She opens up to Bojack and reveals that she actually used to watch horsing around a lot as a kid and it brought her comfort through her painful home life. And for half an hour every week, I had a home and it helped me survive. Bojack in turn tells Diane that she's too good to be writing Instagram captions. While at dinner with Princess Carolyn and her new boyfriend Ralph, Diane learns that Ralph's sister Stefani is starting a new feminist website called Girl Crush, and Diane is given an interview. During the interview, Stefani asks some hard questions about what Diane would be willing to write about relating to her personal relationships. Given that Bojack and Mr. Peanut Butter haven't been free of scandals, and Diane seemingly acknowledges that she might have to write pieces critical of her loved ones, she then accepts the job. Diane and PB celebrate together and toast to their success, as Mr. Peanut Butter's ex Katrina knocks on the door and asks Mr. Peanut Butter if he's interested in running for the governor of California. Shortly after Sarah Lynn's funeral, Bojack disappears, and over the next several months, Diane continually calls him and leaves messages. In October 2016, Mr. Peanut Butter's campaign for governor is heating up. Diane is supportive, but secretly hopeful that it will end sooner than later, as she doesn't think Mr. Peanut Butter will be a good governor. In early 2017, Mr. Peanut Butter's campaign somehow ends up creating a literal ski race for for the governorship of California, which he loses, but his opponent Woodchuck Kuchuk Berkowitz does not win either. When the winner, Todd Chavez, immediately resigns, a special election is triggered, leading to further campaigning from Mr. Peanut Butter. This causes Diane to panic pretty severely, and as she tries to leave another message for Bojack, the phone responds that his mailbox is full. In summer 2017, while working at Girl Crush, Diane finally receives a call back from Bojack, who is panicking. He apologizes to Diane for being gone for a year and a half, and the two catch up and fall back into their old banter, and say that they miss each other. Diane is very worried that Mr. Peanut Butter is going to become a pro-fracking candidate in his campaign, and begs him not to do it. Unfortunately, he does anyways, and Todd goes out of his way to distract Diane from learning about this development. Todd gives Diane a phony story about Channing Tatum's illegitimate daughter, and has as Diane chased the story by testing DNA, which actually belongs to Bojack and his alleged daughter Hollyhock, who came to LA seeking out Bojack. Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter start having difficulties in the bedroom around this time, and they blame the campaign. Diane is understandably very upset that PB is pro-fracking, and eventually decides to write pieces criticizing that decision in Girl Crush, starting a public feud between Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter. PB ends up approving fracking to start happening in their literal backyard. PB confronts Diane about the articles and criticizes her for airing their dirty laundry in public. Diane tells him that she thinks he would be a bad governor and publishes another article right in front of him. They get into a physical altercation which leads to equally physical angry sex, solving their sex problem. 
After a mass shooting threatens the success of the Hollywood film Miss Taken, Princess Carolyn asks Diane to write a puff piece to help give it good press. Diane meets with the star of the film Courtney Portnoy, and when leaving the restaurant somebody attempts to mug them both. Courtney pulls out a gun and stops the mugger in their tracks. This leads to Diane trying out guns at a shooting range and ultimately writing a girl crush piece about having a handgun. The piece blows up and inspires women everywhere to buy guns to protect themselves. It also leads to Mr. Peanut Butter having another public feud with Diane as he hates guns, and they even debated on live television. The rise in gun sales to women leads to massive overhauling in gun laws in California, outlawing them entirely. I can't believe this country hates women more than it loves guns. While talking to her friend Roxy, Diane pointedly ignores her to give Todd advice on his potential sham marriage with Courtney Portnoy, showing once again that she is not a very good friend to Roxy. Shortly after this, Bojack finally calls Diane, even though he has been back in LA for a while. Diane is upset that it took him so long. Bojack goes to see Diane at their house where a fundraising dinner is going on. As everyone arrives, the fracking in their yard causes the entire house to collapse underground, trapping the entire party. Diane is understandably furious at PB, and she and Bojack end up getting really drunk and having a heart-to-heart while trapped. Diane is very upset about the state of her life and her sense of self and tells Bojack she's really upset that he didn't call her. Bojack tells her that he wanted to be better for her. Bojack opens up about the situation with his potential daughter Hollyhock and Diane suggests mutual consent forms from the adoption agency. Bojack gives Diane the secret to being happy. Just pretend you are happy and eventually you'll forget your pretending. After they escape the underground, Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter begin staying in the Hotel Kangaroo's Roosevelt, during which Diane enjoys many poolside massages. She tries to give Bojack advice about Hollyhock during this time, but is mostly ignored. Diane soon learns that Jessica Beale has taken Mr. Peanut Butter's place running for governor, and she convinces Mr. Peanut Butter that he has to campaign for Woodchuck to stop Beale from being elected. Not long after this, Diane tries to help Bojack find Hollyhock's birth certificate at City Hall, though they give up when they find how long the lines are. Diane is asked by Stefani to write a piece on Jessica Beale for Girl Crush, and Diane deviously plants the fact that Beale hates avocado. This revelation in the article causes her support to plummet and tanks her campaign. In January 2018, Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter decide to take the new bridge to Hawaii for a vacation, but this doesn't go very well. The massive amounts of traffic causes major tension. They decide to stop the trip and pull over to stay in a motel. While there, Diane explains to PB that she always wanted a Bell room, like the library that Bell had in Beauty and the Beast. The two return to LA, and Mr. Peanut Butter reveals that he had a Bell room installed in their new house, which infuriates Diane. Why would you think I would like this? Because you told me this is what you've always dreamed of? She says this fantasy was personal, and that she feels like he ruined it. She laments the fact that Mr. Peanut Butter can't seem to grasp that she hates big grand gestures like this, and she said it over and over again. Mr. Peanut Butter explains that he's trying really hard with these kinds of gestures because he's afraid Diane will leave him like his other ex-wives. They discuss their relationship and the hardships they've faced, and Diane expresses that she's really exhausted trying to make it work. The two end up separating, and Diane moves into a small apartment. The two of them try to remain friends and even have occasional dinners together. On one such occasion, Diane struggles with the fact that their waitress, a pug named Pickles of Plenty, is successfully flirting with Mr. Peanut Butter. PB has a housewarming party at Diane's suggestion, and she attends, sporting a fresh new haircut. Though she invited Bojack, she ends up attending the housewarming party alone. While at the party, Diane sees Mr. Peanut Butter kiss Pickles, but is really bothered when she sees him place his hand on the small of her back, pulling her in closer. This triggers Diane immensely, and she leaves the party sobbing. Diane immediately leaves LA and flies to Vietnam to get away, though she is quickly asked to write for Girl Crush while she's there. She writes a piece called 10 Reasons to Go to Vietnam, a Girl Crush Personal Travel Guide. Diane struggles with her time in Vietnam, as she doesn't actually speak the language. While there, she meets a crew member on a film who assumes she's Vietnamese and can't speak English, and she actually goes along with it. It eventually falls apart, and they argue before she leaves. You were just pretending this whole time? I was actually feeling something special here. Really? Diane flies back to LA, and Mr. Peanut Butter picks her up from the airport. They catch up, and when they arrive back at Diane's apartment, they sign the papers to finalize the divorce. Mr. Peanut Butter tells Diane that he's now dating Pickles, and Diane tells him that she's happy for him. Shortly after this, Princess Carolyn and Flip McVicker cast canceled actor Vance Wagner to play Fritz on Bojack's new series, Filbert. Diane questions and disagrees with this decision immensely. After Vance eventually turns down Filbert, PC changes her tune and wants to cancel him, so she puts Diane and Bojack together to speak out against him. With Diane's talking points, Bojack successfully becomes a feminist media talking head. Diane is then confronted by Anna Bonacopita about the takedown of Vance, and Diane gets heated about the lack of accountability in Hollywood. Woman to woman, can't you admit this is screwed up? 
After this, Vance Wagner says that he left Filbert because it was sexist. So Diane and Bojack review scripts, and Diane claims that the show is, in fact, sexist. She makes some really important points about how Filbert seems to use its deconstruction of toxic masculinity merely as an excuse to relish in toxic masculinity. Bojack largely writes off what she says. Later, after a revelation on Orion Seacrest Type's podcast, Bojack asks Diane to come work on Filbert and help fix the issues with the scripts. She's hired on the show, and Mr. Peanut Butter is then cast as Fritz. On on Diane's first day on set, the creator Flip McBicker basically tells her to keep quiet and cash her checks. Sit in my office, don't chew too loud, and collect your paycheck. When Diane leaves set, she finds Anna Spanakopita in her car. Anna plays an audio tape of Bojack vaguely admitting to something that happened between him and a girl in New Mexico on a boat. What? I keep asking myself, if her mother didn't walk in, would I have done it? Diane continues to struggle to get Flip to listen to her suggestions. On PC's advice, she manipulates Flip into thinking the ideas were actually his. One of the ideas leads to a stunt that gets Bojack hurt on set, and Diane feels really guilty about this. Diane also continues to struggle with what to do about the tape she heard of Bojack. She consults her therapist and works through her feelings on it. Diane's changed behavior towards Bojack leads him to seeing Diane's therapist himself, which eventually leads to the doctor cutting ties with Diane and keeping Bojack as a client. Diane actually comes to terms with this and tells Bojack he needs more help than she does, but Bojack writes off the entire concept of therapy and claims he's too smart for it. He also tells Diane that they're the same. This sends Diane into an incredibly angry state. As a response, Diane actually writes blatant references to the New Mexico tape into the next Filbert script without telling Bojack. When Bojack performs the scene, he's incredibly uncomfortable and distraught over these references. On Halloween 2018, Diane goes to drop off script pages for Bojack, having forgotten about his annual Halloween party. In her short time there, her car gets blocked in between two other cars. Mr. Peanut Butter's new girlfriend, Pickles, approaches Diane and tells her it's okay if she's jealous. Diane tells her that she isn't jealous. Diane runs into Bojack, who is uncomfortable after the previous episode of Filbert, and Diane ends up having a very hard time getting out of his driveway with all of the cars in the way. Pickles, now upset at Mr. Peanut Butter, locks herself in the bathroom, and PB expresses his fears about his love life to Diane. Diane tells him that he needs to stop dating women so much younger than him or grow up himself because his girlfriends simply outgrow his maturity level. Diane then has a heart-to-heart -heart with Pickles. She actually gives Pickles some very sweet advice and reassurance about Mr. Peanut Butter. And he loved me so much for 10 years. If there's one thing I know about that guy, it's that he loves the person he's with deeply and unconditionally. Diane ends up taking a helicopter home just to get out of the party. In early 2019, Diane attends the Filbert premiere. She bumps into Bojack, who she hasn't had much contact with since Filbert finished shooting. Bojack gives a speech about how Filbert makes him feel better about the bad things he's done in his past, which triggers Diane and she leaves the premiere. While leaving, she ends up stopping to talk to Bojack and tells him she doesn't want the show to justify people's shitty actions. The two get in a huge fight where Diane brings up tons about Bojack's past that he needs to reconcile with, including New Mexico and Sarah Lynn. She angrily leaves after this fight. Please let go of me. Diane, please. You're hurting me, and I would like you to let go now. On the way out, Diane runs into Mr. Peanut Butter, who drives her home. He ends up going inside with her, and they have sex. Diane quits Filbert for season two, which begins shooting shortly after. However, production is shut down after a gruesome incident between Bojack and Gina Cazador on set. Later in 2019, Mr. Peanut Butter visits Diane and tries to get her to tell Pickles about their affair, but Diane refuses. Their argument leads to another round of angry sex. Mr. Peanut Butter thinks this means that they're getting back together, but Diane immediately denies this. She convinces Mr. Peanut Butter to tell Pickles the truth, but instead, Mr. Peanut Butter proposes to Pickles. Diane then meets with Stefani about Girl Crush, which is pivotal to video, and Stefani wants Diane to be the face of their video team. Shortly after this, Bojack goes to see Diane at her house, and he asks her to write a takedown of him and reveal the truth of everything he's ever done wrong. She refuses and tells him he needs to take accountability for himself. This results in Diane driving Bojack to a rehab center in Malibu called Pastiches. As they arrive, Diane opens up to Bojack about her friend Abby, who abandoned her in high school, and relates it to her relationship with Bojack. You're here, and I hate you but you're my best friend and you need me. Bojack walks into rehab and Diane drives off into the sunset. Diane spends much of 2019 traveling around the country making video content for Girl Crush with a cameraman named Guy. Eventually, the two start a romantic relationship. The pair stop in Guy's hometown, Chicago. Diane and Guy go through some awkward stages while determining what their relationship means. Guy doesn't want to introduce Diane to her son unless it's serious and also doesn't seem to know how to introduce her to his friends. Stefani tries to convince Diane to start chasing more feel-good stories, which she tries to do, but 
but ultimately ends up chasing a scandal surrounding the White Whale Corporation. While chasing this story, Guy and Diane argue about aspects of her life, and Guy wonders why Diane doesn't leave LA if she's so miserable there. She in turn criticizes him for his wishy-washy feelings on their relationship. Am I your girlfriend? Am I the, um, you know, woman that I work with? They end up going to the White Whale building where the CEO reveals the full scope of their scandal and power. It's also revealed that Congress passed a bill that makes murder legal for billionaires, protecting him from prosecution. After this failure, Diane decides to go back to LA, and she waits at the train station with Guy. He wants her to stay in Chicago, but Diane refuses. As soon as she arrives back in LA, Diane has the realization that she made a mistake. She calls Guy back and tells him that she wants to move to Chicago. Before Diane leaves LA for good, she goes to see Bojack. Bojack has been in rehab this entire time, but is out on a day pass for Mr. Peanut Butter and Pickle's surprise wedding being thrown by Todd. Diane meets him there. Unfortunately, Mr. Peanut Butter reveals the truth about him and Diane to Pickles right before the surprise, leading to everyone at the party hiding from the couple, including Diane and Bojack, who have a heart to heart while hiding. When I got my two month chip, I thought, I wish Diane could see this. Diane wants to make sure Bojack will be okay without her, and he tells her that he will be. Diane moves to Chicago in mid to late 2019 and struggles immensely to write her new book on personal essays. She then begins to struggle with depression. She's worried that going on antidepressants will have negative side effects like the ones she dealt with in college. Despite this, Guy gently pushes Diane towards taking the meds. I'd feel better if you just tried the medication your doctor prescribed. Well, I'd feel worse. While Guy is on a work trip to the Galapagos Islands in late 2019, Diane gets a surprise visit visit from Bojack, who is now out of rehab. Her apartment is a disaster and is littered with trash and cigarette butts. Diane opens up about her struggles with her book and her insecurities about her relationship and what might happen if she takes antidepressants. That if she takes them, it will just reveal the real her to the world and to herself the messy, struggling writer who she feels she is in this very moment. Bojack tells Diane something she really needed to hear. I wanted to thank you for believing in me when I didn't and for encouraging me to accept the help I needed. Hmm. This helps shift Diane's perspective, and she decides to start taking the antidepressants. In early 2020, the antidepressants are having a mostly positive effect on Diane, though she is still struggling to write her memoir. She tries really hard to access and write about her trauma, but with little luck. While working on her book at the mall, she ends up writing a young adult mystery story called Ivy Tran Mall Court Detective, inspired by what she saw at the mall but she thinks this kind of story is beneath her and wants to write about her trauma. When she continues to struggle writing her memoir, she goes off her meds, which sends her spiraling. Guy encourages Diane to continue taking her meds and also, without her knowledge, sends Princess Carolyn the pages of her Ivy Tran story, which gets an incredible response from PC. Diane is of course furious about this and still wants to write her deep, gritty memoir. In May 2020, Diane goes to visit Bojack at Wesleyan University, where he's now teaching. She goes there to see his drama class's end of semester performance. After the performance, Diane has a deep conversation with Princess Carolyn about what it would mean to write about her trauma as a coping mechanism, as a way for her pain and suffering to make sense and to be turned into something useful. That means that all the damage I got isn't good damage, it's just damage. Eventually, Diane decides that she's going to write the Ivy Tran book instead. After this, Diane, PC, and Todd discover Bojack passed out in front of the theater and they help him back to his office. He reveals that there are reporters looking into his past and planning to run a story about him. They just don't know what. The group racks their brains trying to figure out what the story could be about. One of the reporters, Paige Sinclair, ends up calling Diane and asks about Bojack's relationship with Sarah Lynn. PC wants to try and spin the story, but Diane knows this is a bad idea. She even questions Bojack's involvement with Sarah Lynn, knowing certain details that others didn't. She died of a heroin overdose, yeah? And you had heroin. Bojack brand. You kept it in your glove compartment. Diane. Bojack reveals that he did give her the heroin that killed her, and Diane tells them she doesn't want any part of what's happening, and she leaves. Bojack ends up having a TV interview with Biscuits Braxby about his part in Sarah Lynn's death, but Diane doesn't want to watch it. The interview ends up going well, and Bojack schedules a second interview for the following evening. The day after the interview, Diane meets Guy's son, Sonny, for the first time, and immediately makes him cry when talking about his parents. Later that night, Diane is struggling to write and decides to turn on Bojack's second interview. She catches the end where Biscuits tears into Bojack about being a selfish and careless person. Bojack actually agrees with Biscuits, and Diane shows a look of discomfort and conflict. Three months later, Diane is still revising her book, but has an advanced copy. She considers writing more adult content, but PC presses her to try 
try and write a sequel to Ivy Tran. Sonny actually reveals that he read her advanced copy of the book and that he loved it. He has a really nice conversation with Diane about some of the inspiration for the characters, like Ivy and Moose's relationship mirroring Diane and Bojax. Sonny says he thinks the book will be good for girls with low self-esteem, and Diane says she'll start working on the sequel. Weeks later, the book is released. But also, Guy's ex-wife Lady is moving to Houston with Sonny, and Guy asks Diane to move there with them so he can stay with his son. While Diane is doing book signings, she finds a book written by Mr. Peanut Butter. She calls him and the two catch up and get some much needed closure and perspective on their relationship. Mr. Peanut Butter tells Diane something important that she takes to heart. If we hadn't met each other until now, we wouldn't be the people we are now. Yeah. Not long after this, Diane gets a drunken phone call from Bojack, who leaves a message, basically telling her that he's going to go swimming while drunk and high with little regard for his own safety, unless she calls him back. She woke up to the message and called the police to try and check on him. Bojack nearly drowned in his old pool, which struck Diane with heavy guilt. Bojack is actually tried and sent to prison for breaking and entering into his old house. This guilt made Diane question her entire relationship and all of the decisions she's made, and almost caused her to not move to Houston with Guy. She eventually changes her mind, and the two of them get married. In 2021, Diane runs into Bojack at Princess Carolyn's wedding. Bojack meets Diane on the roof, similar to where Bojack first opened up to Diane when they were riding One Trick Pony. Diane vented about everything Bojack's voicemail did to her, and opened up up about her life since then. She expresses something important to her, that the people we meet and the relationships in our lives are all a part of who we are and how we become ourselves. She doesn't regret being with Mr. Peanut Butter because he helped make her who she is, and implicitly, she feels the same way about Bojack. Even if their relationship is coming to an end, she's happy to have met him. She says one last thing that she needs to say. It's going to be okay, and I'm sorry and thank you. Diane gets up to leave, but Bojack stops her to tell her one last story. He gives her a funny anecdote about prison, and the pair of them fall back into their old playful banter in a very sweet conversation. Eventually, the conversation ends. They sit together, and they look up at the stars in the sky in silence. And that is the complete Diane Nguyen timeline. Diane is an amazing character and has one of the most significant and well-threaded arcs in all of BoJack Horseman. Her journey is one of identity and self-discovery, but also of self-acceptance. One thing we learn through Diane's story, from Live Fast Diane Win to The Dog Days Are Over, to Good Damage, to Nice While It Lasted, is the idea that the hardships we've faced, the failures we've endured, the struggles and victories and everything in between, they are all a part of who we are. It's the rain that has weathered us into the shape we find ourselves, and it's important for us to accept that we wouldn't be the people we are if it weren't for those experiences. Diane's story taught me a lot about myself, and I know so many people see themselves in her. So here's to Diane Nguyen. Folks, thanks for tuning in to another massive BoJack timeline. If you like this one, please make sure to check out the other four I've released so far, especially that Herb Kazaz one. I would really appreciate if more people watched it. And of course, stay tuned for more, because I'm going to do more. Peace. Johnny! Two